There are a whole host of changes in ADR 2025 which concern sodium batteries. Both amendments to existing entries for sodium batteries and new entries and provisions. The reason for this is to introduce provisions for a new type of battery called sodium ion batteries. The term battery in this case includes both cells and batteries. Cells being defined as single electrochemical units and batteries being defined as two or more cells connected together, including battery packs and assemblies. Sodium ion batteries are being developed as a potential replacement for lithium ion batteries, especially in larger energy storage applications. And they have some key advantages. In comparison to lithium cells and batteries, sodium ion are cheaper. Up to 30% is quoted by one manufacturer. And perhaps this may become even more so as production facilities scale up in the coming months and years. They are also more sustainable than their lithium counterparts, as they don't contain copper or lithium, which has to be mined and is a very scarce resource. And for dangerous goods purposes, they are potentially safer. Test reports show they are less reactive and they can be stored and transported at a zero state of charge. Although only time will tell how commercially successful they become. Sodium ion batteries are defined by a new paragraph added at 2.2.9.1.7.2, which includes their testing requirements, which are very similar to those of lithium batteries. The previous provisions for lithium batteries at 2.2.9.1.7 are now at 2.2.9.1.7.1. Don't worry if you're trying to keep up with those long references, we've provided a list of references below this video. Sodium ion batteries are assigned to class 9, but there are other types of sodium batteries already assigned to entries in ADR. So it's important to note exactly the requirements for defining sodium ion batteries, the type which are assigned to class 9. So in true Blue Peter style, here's one we made earlier. To help exemplify this to you. The construction of sodium ion cells varies between manufacturers as different chemistries and technologies are exploited, but there are certain components that they have in common to be classified by the regulations. And at the ends of our cell we have the current collectors, one positive and one negative. Typically these are aluminium as opposed to copper in a lithium ion cell. Aluminium being more economic is one of the advantages of sodium ion cells. The important point to note in terms of the dangerous goods regulations is that there is no sodium metal in the current collectors or indeed anywhere within the sodium ion battery. Next we have the electrodes, the anode and the cathode and the substance or substances these are made from vary greatly, perhaps using specially modified carbon structures among other materials. Again, the key point for dangerous goods classification being that they contain no metallic sodium. Of course, with metallic sodium being water reactive, its absence is an important point of safety to note. As you can see, our sodium ions, in this case ping pong balls, are interspersed within the electrodes. This is what is meant in the new paragraph at 2.2.9.1.7.2 by the terms intercalation or insertion compounds. Within the cell we have a separator and then surrounding all of this we have the electrolyte. The electrolyte contains the sodium ions which can pass through the separator between the electrodes whilst the cell is discharging or being charged. There are presently two main types of electrolyte defined by the regulations, either organic or aqueous alkali. So in simpler terms, either dry or wet. Organic electrolytes are those such as propylene carbonate, 
ethylene carbonate or a dimethyl carbonate mixture, among others, which are often hazardous, themselves being flammable and or combustible and capable of producing flammable and or toxic vapours and gases from damaged or defective cells. And this is one of the reasons why these cells are regulated as dangerous goods. Although I should note that they produce significantly less volume of such gases than their lithium ion counterparts under test conditions. Indeed, a lot of work is going on around the world to develop alternative battery technologies using wet or aqueous based electrolytes, which under the new regime would require cells of this type to be classified differently to that of sodium ion batteries containing a dry or organic electrolyte. It's therefore very important to note the type of electrolyte used and for larger cells the volume of organic electrolyte used as this will play a key part in how we can ship these cells and batteries. And this is a key difference to the way in which sodium ion batteries in comparison to lithium ion batteries are classified and shipped, but one which manufacturers and suppliers must provide information to you about in order for these cells and batteries to be transported and in some cases shipped with minimal regulation. So to summarise, our sodium ion batteries assigned to class 9 must contain no metallic sodium or sodium alloy and must use an organic non-aqueous compound as the electrolyte. We've exemplified how sodium batteries are classified as follows. Sodium batteries containing metallic sodium or sodium alloy are class 4.3 and are assigned to UN3292, the proper shipping name for which was batteries containing sodium or cells containing sodium. This has been changed to batteries containing metallic sodium or sodium alloy, or cells containing metallic sodium or sodium alloy. Unlike lithium metal batteries, which are very widespread in their use, the way in which sodium metal batteries work means that this type of battery will not be used as a replacement for lithium metal batteries. Moving on, sodium batteries which contain no metallic sodium or sodium alloy but contain an aqueous alkali electrolyte are class 8 and assigned to UN2795 batteries wet filled with alkali and this is confirmed by new special provision 401 added to both the UN3292 and UN2795 entries. Vehicles powered by such batteries and transported with the batteries installed are assigned to UN3171 confirmed by updated text in special provision 388. And now we come on to the new types as defined by 2.2.9.1.7.2 and if you're familiar with lithium batteries you'll probably notice their classification and many of their provisions are very similar. Sodium ion batteries containing an organic electrolyte are class 9 and assigned to the new entry of UN3551. When contained in or packed with equipment, they are class 9 and assigned to the new UN entry of 3552. And for vehicles powered by sodium ion batteries, that's the dry class 9 type rather than the wet class 8 type, they are class 9 and assigned to the new UN entry 3558. Such vehicles are already in use in China. There are no major changes to the packing methods for UN2795 and UN3292. If you're shipping UN3292 by other modes of transportation, you may just wish to note the updated proper shipping names. If you're new to shipping UN2795 wet batteries, please bear in mind that by both road and sea transportation, the special provisions vary greatly 
between ADR and the IMDG code, which are the rules for sea transportation. So please bear that in mind and check those out if applicable. For our new friends, UN3551 and UN3552, the packing methods, including the exemptions, mirror very closely those for lithium batteries, with one very notable difference, which is the new special provision 400. This allows cells and batteries which have been intentionally short-circuited Please refer to the manufacturer's recommendations on how to do this. It allows them to be carried exempt with minimal requirements, much like the special provision 188 exemption for lithium batteries. As long as they comply with the wording of special provision 400, which includes the requirement that they would theoretically be at or below the limited quantities provisions 7A limit for the dangerous components of each cell. Now that's a very key point. The new special provision states each cell. As we defined earlier, batteries are composed of two or more cells. Therefore, hypothetically, this special provision could cover even the largest of batteries. So as long as the individual cells contain no more hazardous material than would be allowed under the LQ provisions. So, for example, if we go back to our model of a sodium ion cell, the hazardous component in this case would not be the aluminium or the graphite, but the organic electrolyte. The organic electrolyte present in the cell must be of a classification which is allowed to be transported under the limited quantities provisions and for each cell must not exceed the quantity given in column 7A of table A, the dangerous goods list, for the limited quantities provisions for the entry of the classification for if the electrolyte itself was shipped as a substance or mixture. So a very useful exemption, I'm sure you'll agree, but one which manufacturers are going to need to be aware of in order to provide the relevant information as to whether it can be used or not. For marking and labelling purposes, the familiar lithium battery mark is renamed either the battery mark or label model number 9A are applied to the package or unpackaged batteries or equipment, depending on the packing method or special provision used, in much the same way as is done for lithium batteries.